Well, it's only been two years since Paul Hibbert said the flick twist was coming. Pathetic. Where is the flick twist? I need it for home assistant. Hi, I'm Jeff Bezos, and I just need three more yachts for my collection. Oh. Not cool, man. Seriously. They will release the flick twist. It's just heavily delayed. It is coming. It's just delayed. It's a Christmas miracle. This is the latest to a party any smart home device has ever been, and I am so sorry. It was announced to me back in November 2021, and they were like, oh, go push our Kickstarter. And I was like, okay. <laughs> sorry, I am so sorry. Uh, so this thing is here now, and it's actually way, way more important than anyone seems to realize. There's a whole bunch of my friends on YouTube that are saying, well, it, well, it doesn't really live up to its expectations. It's, it's not quite got the hype we expected, but I think they've missed a few real key solid things. Check this out. Is that sexy? I felt sexy. Not as sexy as it's about to get, right? So check this out. This button, imagine I've just come to bed, we're gonna lay down, watch TV for a bit before we fall asleep. If I press this button, first thing that happens is that little cute ball lamp comes on. Not quite happy with the, the brightness, so I'm just gonna scale the brightness up a little bit. Turn on the dial, not enough, let's get it to 100%. So the dial does what you would expect it to do, it changes the brightness of that lamp. What is also happening is my Nvidia Shield has just come on and in turn has switched on my projector because it's come on. And now I have my projector to watch, I've got a lamp, we're all good. It gets so cool at this point though, this is literally the coolest thing I've ever done. If I hold this button down and twist this to the Netflix icon and press it, guess what happens? I get Netflix, right? It turns to Prime Video, we get Prime Video. And look how quick that is, right? Switch it to YouTube. I get YouTube, but not only YouTube, it's giving me Corridor Crew because that's what me and Nisha are watching at the minute. So it's not just loading up YouTube, it's loading up a particular channel. If I then switch this to Disney Plus, I get Disney Plus. If I switch it to Paramount, I get Paramount. If I switch it to Plex, I get Plex. And if I switch it to Apple TV, I get Apple TV. It, how good is that, right? I have to pick up my remote, that's that's fairly obvious. At some point I'm gonna to have to start using it to browse. I could actually browse my voice, that's a whole separate conversation. Uh, but I can now browse through TV and, uh, I don't know, let's say watch this John Lennon murder thing. I need to go to the toilet. I need, just need to just bear with me while I go to the bathroom. Pause button. I got, I got a pause button, right? And when I come back and press it again, it's a resume button. This button, not only does it wake up my Android TV and turn a light on, it's also a pause button and it's just seamless. It just does both of those things. So it's time to go to sleep. And it's just usually fed up around, I don't know, 11.30, my absolute maximum. And she's like, can you bed? So at that point, I'm told I have to turn the lights off, right? I could turn the dial down to turn the lights off. That will work just fine if I want to carry on watching TV, but I want to go to sleep too, so I'm going to double click the button and what happens? It stops playing, it switches off the Nvidia shield, it turns my lamp off and, listen, that's the waterfall sound coming out my Google speaker to help me to sleep. How cool is that? It's the coolest thing I've ever done. I absolutely love it. And there is more stuff that I could do. I could put more things on this dial if I wanted to. I could have a sexy time point on this dial that would change the color of my lights. Uh, when I get my curtain motors installed, I'll be able to close my curtains, open my curtains. I'll be able to do so many things with this one button. And you can too. Uh, perhaps, perhaps a tutorial is in order. Of course, it can be used to just like dial back your Lifex lights or your Philips Hue lights. It has a few built-in functions, but everything you've just seen was done through Home Assistant using some actually really simple and very cool tricks. To all the Home Assistant dorks that said I was too stupid to use Home Assistant, I win. All I had to do was use grep commands via my Android phone to query my Nvidia Shield to find out what the individual command line codes were to start the individual streaming applications using HTTP requests through webhooks. Are you like me now?
bitch. Good. He is one of us now. Uh, hang on a minute. No, I can see his virginity growing back as we speak. N no. One of us. One of us. One of us. Thankfully, you don't actually have to be a mega nerd to get this to do some absolutely awesome stuff because each point on the dial can actually trigger Alexa routines. And this means we can do practically anything. And to do what I did in the demonstration, you literally just choose advanced selector, choose a point on the dial, choose push, and then Amazon Alexa. If you then enable the flick skill, then your dial positions will appear as devices that you can use to trigger routines. And I am more impressed by that than the time that I found out this guy walks really fast for a living. I walk like that whenever somebody holds a door for me because I'm British. I'm sorry, I'm coming! Please, wait for me! It's very important that you continue to hold the door! I probably can't open it myself! wrong with the English. Without any home assistant support whatsoever, and with me only having a tiny brain, I was actually able to do this. So first things first, this thing is usually down on my desk over here and I can just kind of reach down and twiddle its knob. EVERYTHING IN THE WORLD IS FILTH! But I'm going to show you today from up here, right? So first things first, it is a dimmer for the main lights in this room. So dim that down the lights in this room dim. Um, and that's just using uh, an Amazon Alexa routine. That is like the most straightforward thing in the world. Somewhere around the quarter mark, it goes up by a percentage. Around the halfway mark, another percentage. All the way around, goes to 100%, right? So super straightforward. But this is the really cool part, right? So if I hold this button down and twist it one point and press it, it plays a specific playlist. I'm playing my crooner playlist because I'm 42. Right, but if you hold it down and turn it to another point, it could start another playlist. Hold it down, turn it to another point, it could start another playlist. You could put stickers around this thing for every mood you have, and just keep going through your different playlists by holding it down, turning the dial. What an ingenious way of using this thing, if, if I do say so myself. Right, but the next thing is, if I want to skip track, I can just press the button once. It skips track. And the reason I chose this is because I wanted a button I could just whack. And well, watch. Next, 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 next. It just, I love it so much, right? Double click, pauses the music, double click, resumes the music. Spotify button, Spotify button with a playlist selector. Genius! If I do say so myself. Because this thing works with Alexa routines, the things that you can achieve are literally endless. I can plonk this thing on my fridge because it's a magnet, and use it to change the temperature of my Acara radiator thermostat in the same room, just by creating a routine for a different temperature at each point on the dial. And I can mix and match too. I could use this as my Spotify button to start Spotify playlists, but use the dial to change the radiator thermostat. But once you start getting into HTTP requests to Home Assistant, that's when it starts to get really exciting. If you're interested in how I was able to launch Netflix, then one of the routines is on your screen right now, along with all the ADB commands I found for starting the different programs on my Nvidia Shield. If you're using a different Android box, like a Fire Stick for example, you'll probably need different commands, and if you're interested in a tutorial on how I found those ADB commands, let me know in the comments. Let me know in the comments what you think of any of this, because then I get engagement, and YouTube pushes my video to more people. On that note, why don't you subscribe if you haven't already, and ding the bell and give this video a thumbs up. All those are good things for me too. On with the show. <laughs> and now for the elephant in... The elephant in the room. Keep doing this every week. It's very funny still, isn't it? It's still very funny. So, um, as of time of filming, and I have mentioned this to Shortcut Labs, they really ought to change this, and they have said they're going to, they just haven't got around to it yet. At the moment, you can only actually set a routine in four individual points on the dimmer. This is just for the actual dimmer thing. If you hold the button down and change the dimmer, you can select 12 individual points. Why not just make it so you could do both? 
I can't think of a reason that you wouldn't have 12 individual points for twist and 12 individual points for hold and twist. I, why not just do both things? Um, but the fact of the matter is, it doesn't matter that much even now, and they are planning to fix it. The reason it doesn't really matter is, you don't normally want to dim your lights beyond a certain point. You normally only want kind of 33%, 66%, 75%, 100%. So you can actually use these four points for dimming anyway. Um, I just think it's a bit of a shame that you can't have a more granular control, and Flick have said they're going to resolve this. They've had other people already say this, and they're working on it. Um, this is only, in fact, until they release matter support for it. Their ultimate goal is to have matter support for this thing, at which point the whole dimming thing will work with almost everything. Um, I will have an update on that when it happens. Secondly, and this won't matter to most of you, um, you can't shuffle Spotify from the button using their direct Spotify integration. That's kind of hard to explain. Let me explain what that means. So you could start an Alexa routine that shuffled your Spotify playlist and it would play out of your Echo speaker just by pressing the button and starting an Alexa routine. Right. If you want to use its built-in Spotify function to start Spotify on my Apple Mac, I can't start it shuffled, which means that it always starts the playlist with the same song, which can be a little bit irritating. Um, and in fact, means I don't use it for my Mac. Every time I start music now, I use my Echo speaker. I'd rather have my Mac playing because I have better speakers. In the meantime, this is actually one of the most exciting smart home devices I've been sent in ages because I can start Amazon Alexa routines and I can start Home Assistant routines using either Alexa's routines functionality or Home Assistant's HTTP webhooks functionality. These two things between them mean I can do anything, like literally anything. And if you're well into Home Assistant, you can do it all entirely locally. I think if you're disappointed because it doesn't work with HomeKit, I get that, it's a shame. If you're disappointed it doesn't work with SmartThings, I think there are ways around this. I think SmartThings has a HTTP server. You could probably use webhooks in exactly the same way on SmartThings as I am with Home Assistant and work around the fact that there isn't a direct integration. I'm just waiting personally for them to give us 12 options on the main dial instead of only giving us 12 options on the press and dial. Once that's resolved, this is the best gadget of 2024. If you're interested in buying one, they're about, I think, 68 quid, maybe, discounted in my description. Go check down there. There's a discount. I will have put it there. In the meantime, if you've enjoyed today's video, thanks to these incredible people. Without them, there wouldn't be a video. I would still be working in a call center. If you want to be one of those incredible people, you can do that at either Patreon or buy me a one-off beer at PayPal. Either way, I would genuinely love you forever. These are my Facebooks and my Xs and my Instagrams and my TikToks and all of the other social medias in the world. Come and hang out there and we can be best friends. See you next time. I don't know why they didn't just make it exactly the same for both so you can have a choice of <laughs> I can use either Alexa routines to start pretty much anything, or I can use 